In all my 23 years of existence, I have only experienced the daunting task of moving twice. The first time was when I was just a bright-eyed and curious little kid, around the age of five or six. It was a time when my days were consumed by watching my beloved Jungle Book on repeat, courtesy of my trusty VHS player. I know it may seem like a lifetime ago, but I assure you, I'm not that ancient. I distinctly remember throwing a massive tantrum on the stairs of our old house when my parents broke the news that we were moving. I mean, how could they expect me to leave behind my cosy room and share a space with my pesky little sister? It was a tough pull to swallow, especially since we had to wait for what felt like an eternity for the new house to be renovated before we could finally have our own rooms again. I couldn't believe it when I realised that my little sister had surpassed me in height. I couldn't help but glare at her with a mix of pride and envy. How was it possible that the little girl I used to tower over was now looking down at me? But as I took a step back and looked at the bigger picture, I realised that it was for the best after all. Despite our height difference, we had formed an unbreakable bond over our shared love for anime and drawing. Of course, I have to admit that I was secretly thrilled when I finally got my own room. No more sharing space and no more little sister barging in without knocking. Well, unless she needed to borrow some of my art supplies or just wanted to hang out because she was bored. But even then, I had the power to kick her out if I wanted to. Ah, the perks of having your own space. Alright, let's get back to the juicy stuff. So, the second time I moved was when I finally flew the coop and left behind my childhood home. And let me tell you, it was a no-brainer. I mean, I love my family and all, but I was ready to spread my wings and get some independence. Twenty seemed like the perfect age to do it, you know? And, to be honest with you, I thought I'd be stuck there until I was like 30. I mean, I'm not exactly a social butterfly, but hey, I guess life had other plans in store for me. After I passed my driving test, I decided to move in with my then boyfriend. I had been spending half my time at his place anyway, so it made sense to make it official. To break the news to my parents, I made a clever card that read, Here's a card from your daughter Stacy, to say your house will soon be more spacey. I made it rhyme to make it sound even, but basically, I'm saying I'm moving in with Stephen. My parents were taken aback, but ultimately happy for me. Without wasting any time, I packed up my belongings, and after two car trips, I was all moved in. Moving all of my stuff was like a game of Tetris. I went full Marie Kondo on my belongings, tossing anything that didn't spark joy, or was basically falling apart. Then, I packed everything into four giant plastic containers, except for the awkwardly shaped items that refused to cooperate. Thank goodness for my then boyfriend, who helped me wrangle those beasts and cram them into the car. We even had to borrow a bigger vehicle from his parents for the final load. But hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. I can't even fathom what it would have been like to move a whole house worth of stuff. Our drive to the new place was like a slow and steady race, trying not to let anything topple over and shatter. Let's just say I was relieved when we finally arrived in one piece. After moving everything, I had to unpack. I thought this part would be easy, but alas, surprisingly it is hard to find a place for everything. You kind of feel half moved out for the first week. While there are boxes, still packed with stuff I wasn't sure where to put yet, strewn all around the living room. After I managed to find a home for all my items and got settled into our routine, I was all set. The only thing that I started to miss after a while was my family's childhood dog, a Siberian Husky. I mean, who else was going to listen to me ramble on about my day while we took our daily walks? He was a great listener, even if he didn't understand half of the gobbledygook I was spewing. But alas, I had to move far away and couldn't walk him as often as I wanted. And let me tell you, that little furball looked adorable in his harness. He's a whopping 17 years old now, probably taking naps and reminiscing about the good old days. Oh, and I guess I missed my little sister too, but hey, I can just hop in my car and go see them whenever I want, no biggie. Can you believe it? I've been moved out for three whole years now, and I'm still alive. I know, I'm just as shocked as you are. And don't worry, I didn't survive on just noodles. 
I may have a few quirks, like leaving the spray bottle out after wiping the counters, but we have a good system. He puts his boots in my shoe pog, I leave the spray bottle out. It's all good. And get this, we got along so well that I actually ended up marrying him. But that's a story for another time. Overall, I'm pretty content with my current situation, but I've always dreamed of escaping to the countryside and living in a cosy cottage with a fluffy body collie by my side. And of course, I'd be living my best life as a work-from-home artist and children's book author. Speaking of which, have you checked out my latest children's book, Super Poppy? It's all about a farting guinea pig. It's a gas. Don't forget to visit my website, stacyaloo.com, where you can find some awesome stickers and bookmarks for sale, and even request a custom commission if you want. Oh, and like, subscribe and comment. Alright, I'm off to chase my dreams now. See you!